Welcome to Publishing Power. My name is Joellen, and I am excited to have with us today Tara Kremen from Kobo Writing Life. Welcome, Tara. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Before we get started, I just want to introduce her. She is the author experience um, manager, the senior manager at Kobo Writing Life, and she is responsible for the overall author experience there, which really helps us as authors learn more about what are the opportunities out there and what we can do. She also has a fantastic background in literature and film and a diverse experience throughout the publishing industry. Uh, I believe you started as the author is the um, customer care associate there and worked I, your way up, right? I did. I really climbed the Kobo ladder. <laughs> when I was looking through your bio, I mean, this is fantastic for us to have you because you've done the customer care, you've done content coordination, which from that perspective, I think every author really needs to understand how to use content and how to put it out there. We have a publisher operations specialist, so you're seeing it from their side and then also the author experience. So I am very excited to have it here and I understand that you are committed to this and you're up in Toronto, correct? Yeah, yeah, we're based in uh, Kobo's headquarters here in Toronto. Um, yeah, I kind of have a, a long background with Kobo Writing Life, um, which I think is really helpful because it, it gives me, um, I can answer questions that maybe um, not everyone would be able to answer um, from spending some years, you know, cracking open EPUB files and, and trying to fix them from dealing um, kind of on an author being the first line um, when it comes to like uh, author emails and things like that. So I'm able to use that in this kind of um, author experience role and kind of keep going forward and getting like direct feedback from authors. Like that's my favorite um, part of this job. And, well, I think and not only from the experience of the company, but from the experience of self-publishing in itself, so much has happened in the last decade and in the last seven, 10 years you've been around that it, it's hard to explain how much we evolved, not only annually, but even month to month. So that's why I really wanted to get you on here to kind of tell us about the basics and then also to uh, share with us any of the new stuff that's coming up or, you know, what are the new opportunities out there? Because I know that I can't keep up <laughs> and I'm sure new authors are, you know, are struggling with that. And then even the old hands out there, the, the authors who are published and keep going, it's, it's, it's really continual uh, learning curve there to, to stick in. So could you just tell us about Kobo Writing Life and what it is for authors in general? Sure. So um, Kobo Writing Life will be turning eight this year, which is kind of a long time in um, indie standards. As you said, things change at a ferocious speed. Um, so it's the self-publishing platform for Kobo. Um, so it allows authors to publish their ebooks and their audiobooks um, directly onto Kobo um, to be published on our site and then will be distributed to our partner sites as well. Um, um, in terms of like royalties and things, it's a very like it's a free process. It's very easy to do. Um, for ebooks, if your books are priced to two ninety nine and up, you earn seventy percent. Uh, we don't have a higher pricing cap, um, so you can price your book high and um, still earn seventy percent on each sale. Um, and then in terms of audiobooks, if your books are priced two ninety nine um, and up, you get forty five percent. Uh, if it's below two ninety nine, you get thirty five percent, and if it's a subscription sale, it's thirty two percent. So the real reason to kind of come to Kobo Direct is that you're earning a lot of um, uh, you're earning more on um, each sale because you're not really giving up an aggregator fee, and um, we have a lot of um, features that we can make available to our authors to try and help those that come direct to us. Right, and I, I think it's people. It's very important for people to understand the competition out there. Because if they haven't heard these numbers before, maybe you can let them in on what is the difference, what you might find somewhere else. Uh, some sure. Are, um, most uh, most <laughs> aggregators, um, so different competitors, um, would they, they would take a cut. So they're sort of doing the work of distributing your book for you into all of these different um, areas. Um, so um, it's most likely a 10% additional um, reduction. So instead of you earning 70% on your sale, you're earning 60%. Um, so that's sort of one of the reasons that we um, think it's really um, worthwhile for authors to come direct. Um, next to this is that we have sort of just a best in class uh, uploading system and dashboard. Um, it's a really, really easy to get your book uploaded. Um, it gets up there within um, 24 to 72 hours, um, as does your audiobook, which um, is really sort of astounding because 
um, a lot of other audiobook um, distributors can take several weeks and uh, we're doing it in um, you know sometimes it's within a day um, you know in a matter of hours essentially um, so yeah it's really really fast um, we have a dashboard that shows you the sort of up-to-date daily sales on a global scale um, so we have this great little map where you can see like little dots pop up to where your sales are to just sort of give you a perspective um, because um, Kobo really is um, our authors sometimes tend to focus on North America when it comes to independent publishing, um, but Kobo being a Canadian company, um, you know, Canada is our biggest market, uh, but our next biggest market would be France because um, we have some, um, a really great um, partner in France um, called FNAC, who's been partnered with Kobo since basically day one. And um, so we have a lot of um, um, key partnerships in different countries. So uh, we see authors reporting sales in, in different areas that they wouldn't have easily been able to get a foothold into. Right, right. And I think that's important to realize is where, where you're out there and how you're getting it. So if someone was going to come in, what can you just kind of give us a brief idea of we log in, we upload, do, you know, do we have to have it formatted? Does it format for me? Does, how far does it distribute? Just, you know, sure. through the step by step. Yeah, so uh, when you create your account, um, when you log in and get everything set up, uh, you can click on the create ebook button and it's really four simple steps. So uh, the first step is describing your ebook and this is where you put all your metadata. Um, so your kind of title, um, description, um, your series information. Um, and this is really key because this is like telling us the details in our system about your book. So I always like, wanna highlight to um, a lot of indie authors are kind of serialized writers. So um, something to really keep in mind is to make sure that your series name is um, written exactly the same for each of your books because we'll try and link that in um, we link that on our website and in our system so uh, we're basically trying to sell the book as best we can to the next series so um, that's something key with your um, series information um, and then you also upload your cover image there and then the next step is to upload the content itself um, so we use EPUB which is the kind of industry standard for ebooks um, but you can upload a Word file, you can upload a Mobi file, and we'll convert to EPUB for free. Nice. Um, this, yeah, it's really quick, easy. You can download the EPUB file to preview. Um, it's a pretty good conversion tool. Um, and then the next step is to set the price. So we have um, 16 individual currencies that you can set the price in. So we have your default currency, and then we have all these others. So kind of trying to give you an opportunity to reach the market um, as globally as possible. So we'd really recommend people setting um, uh, kind of an attractive number there. Um, as consumers, we're conditioned to respond well to like um, books that are priced in a 99 cent endpoint. Um, so I would take in mind that when you're setting your currencies to sort of set the currencies in that way. Mm -hmm. And then the final step after that is um, to select uh, your rights and distribution. So you can select your DRM uh, which is your digital rights management. So you can enable that or disable that. Um, you can choose the territories that you'd like to publish in. Um, so if you have the rights everywhere, you can choose worldwide. Uh, perhaps you only want to publish this book in the US. You can do that too by selecting them. Um, and then we have a couple of other distribution options um, after that. So you can distribute to our subscription service that's called Kobo Plus. Um, it's non-exclusive and it's just available in Belgium and the Netherlands for our customers. Um, and then you can also distribute to libraries in this section as well by setting a library price. Um, and then, then you can publish your book. It's very easy. I know it sounds long because I was just describing things in length, but it is really, really four quick steps. Um, and you have the option to set a pre-order um, as far ahead as you like. We don't have any limitations on future pre-order dates and that goes with audiobooks as well. That's great. So you can put it up there and then kind of build up a little launch yeah, and it's a really great marketing tool to have a pre-order and, um, you know, you can kind of pre-order your uh, or kind of market your book before it's even out. Um, and it also, um, as all of the sales um, are generated on your on-sale date, um, it can be, it's a great boost in our store. So it really increases your temperature and your visibility because you're getting all of these sales in one go. And also it looks nice in your dashboard because you just get a big, big jump of sales. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going, yay, we love you. So exactly. really good. And if, if an author is, you know, we deal with authors who have just finished their editing, their editorial service, and some are taking their, their, their manuscripts on to a publishing house or a hybrid, um, and then we have the self-publishing. The self if they're going to go the route of self-publishing, what are, say, a couple of uh, key 
items that you would recommend before they put on there in terms of thinking of a launch versus just a publication? Is, is, what are the, the key tools, sure. takeaways there that often authors aren't thinking about? They think, I'm done. Now the world's going to just buy it. Uh, yeah. you know, who's going to buy it? How are they going to buy it? Where are they going to buy it? Those kind of questions. And how do yeah. we prepare for that? Sure. I would, I would say to really take some time to plan out your launch, you know, decide what sort of um, publisher you want to be with your ebook. Um, so whether that's hybrid and then you can kind of correspond your release with your publisher um, or if you're going the route where you're just doing the ebook itself, you kind of have to take more considerations into launch. Um, if you have multiple format, I think it's always key to release on the same day. Um, it kind of gives you an extra boost. Um, you know, you're appealing to like, say your print and your audio and your E all in one spot. So, um, so if you decide to go the publishing wide um, route, saying that you would publish your books in as many places as possible, um, which is sort of what we recommend, you know, you, you kind of want to get your book in front of the reader, however they want to read it, right? So you kind of make it um, available in all of the avenues. Um, what I would say is take some time and research, research the different platforms, reach out to the different retailers. Um, we have a number of um, options available um, for in terms of promotions for authors um, that you might not be aware of. So, you know, get in touch with us, tell us your release dates. That's really key. Um, um, we have a calendar where we kind of mark down our new releases and we make sure that, that we kind of have them featured on site. Um, and then we can really advise you in terms of promotions. So, um, uh, you might not want to be promoting your very first book because, you know, you want people to pay full hog for that. Um, but if you're kind of thinking further down the line, if you kind of built up um, your kind of readership in a certain extent, um, reach out to us um, and ask for our promotions tab. So this is available right in your dashboard um, and it allows authors to apply for prime spots. Um, whether it's kind of um, daily deals, um, which are featured like on our main page, um, or different sales that go get emailed out to um, targeted customers. So there's really a lot of opportunities there. Right. And I, and I, I understand those are pretty well, you know, in, in people don't really understand the, the cost out there and what you can invest, which can invest. But uh, I understand that those are really quite uh, competitive. And uh, mm -hmm. can you explain yeah. more about that? Yeah, so there's lots of different types of promotions. So, um, so one of the ones that we always have running, so um, Kobo very quickly learned that the most searched term on our website is the word free. Uh, people like freebies. Um, so to counter that, we are sort of redirecting all of the traffic to this curated free page with Kobo Writing Life authors. Um, so we have many different genres, we have editors picks, um, and we've um, we heard people reporting that this is um, a really strong way to get good read through for paid titles. So, um, you know, free first in series is still doing very, very well on Kobo. Um, or um, we have a price scheduling tool also that allows you to change the price for a certain amount of time. Um, you can set up however long you'd like to do this. So, um, so say if you had a book bub, and you also want to try and boost that on Kobo, if you have a free book above, you can also set your book to free and then try and apply for a promotion that would suit you to get um, featured on our free page on our website. So you're just sort of like trying to doubly boost um, the things that you're doing. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing, um, which may not be helpful for a brand new author because, you know, again, you don't want to give your book away for free. Um, but I'm trying to thinking of um, people that have like longer term series, you know, you don't want to kind of cannibalize any sales. Um, and other promotions that we have available are um, we do what we call a buy more, save more um, that can be multi author. Right. Um, so to a customer, this looks like buy one, get one free or, you know, buy two, get one free or, or however it is. Um, but how it works on the author side is that if your book is purchased with um, one or two other um, author books, each book gets slightly discounted. So no one author is taking the full hit. Um, and then the customer is able to um, kind of purchase the books together, but you're still earning a little bit more than you would if you were kind of uh, reducing that file itself. So that's one of the promotions that we have. Um, like I mentioned, we have our daily deal feature, um, which can be a prime spot. So some of our promotions um, require upfront costs. So depending on the spot, it can be $5 up to $100. Um, so if you're kind of new to Kobo and trying to get your footing, um, you might not want to pay up front, which is completely reasonable. So um, because of that, we also have another a secondary way um, to kind of help with promotions where um, you would give up an extra 10% of your COGS. So um, instead of earning 70% on Kobo, you would earn 60% because you're in this specific promotion. 
Um, and those are, that's the one that I would say um, for new authors to go down because um, you're not losing anything um, up front. It, it just depends on the promotion. So um, if you go through the promo tab, you'll be able to see them. So uh, it would just be a COGS reduced promotion versus an upfront cost. So. Yeah, I think that's great because I mean, and the, the good thing is that those are those packages that you're talking about. Those are all similar genre. Are they pre? Do you have recommended as a as a group that this is recommended, or do they just freely shop and buy what they like? Check it out. Uh, on the customer side, you mean? Yes. Uh, yeah, they're they're always specifically targeted. So um, if it's a so right now we have a buy more save more that's for sci-fi. Um, so there'll be an email going out to like sci-fi readers in these um, specific English language geos. Um, and that's who we'll be targeting. Um, sometimes we have specific, you know, Australia Day promotion. So that will go to like our Australian geos. So um, yeah, they are very targeted to customers that are um, interested in promotion. That's great. And I, I think that is, that's a really hard thing for an author individually to do, is to understand, you know, how do I connect in with people already in that same genre? Because people do understand, okay, make my book cover look similar, you know, use my keywords to be similar, but how do you get to the audience? How do you crack that? And this is a fantastic way of, of doing that. And you had mentioned a couple of times, and I want to make sure we talk about this, was audiobooks, because audiobooks have been around a while, and yet they still feel very new. <laughs> Same as podcasting, it's been around for a while, but it still feels very new. Can you tell us a little bit more of how that works with Kobo? Sure, I know. I keep kind of referring to audiobooks as like, oh, they're new audiobooks. I'm like, books on tape have existed uh, for, for decades. You know, this isn't a new uh, format. But in terms of the digital landscape, it is new. So Kobo launched audiobooks in 2017. Um, so three years now that we're in 2020. Um, and Kobo Writing Life launched our direct audiobook upload in September. Um, so it's kind of a slow rollout to authors. So if you have an audiobook and you don't see the audiobook button, um, shoot us an email at writinglife.cobo.com and we'll um, set it up for you. Um, so we're basically trying to mimic the ebook experience and make it as easy as possible. So if you already have a finished audiobook file, um, you can upload this directly onto Kobo. Um, so you can enter all of your metadata and details, um, your author name, your narrator, um, your squareified image, if you don't have a square image, we'll adjust it for you. Um, and then this is like my nerdy pub uh, publisher operations background getting me really excited. Um, but my favorite feature is the upload process. Um, so it's really easy. It's a drag and drop from your audio files. And what Kobo learned when we moved into the audiobook realm was that um, there's, no, um, uh, there's no standard for audiobooks. Um, so there's no rules really. It's kind of like the Wild West in terms of publishing. It kind of feels like ebooks did like t 10 or 12 years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no standard format for a table of contents. So when Kobo was kind of getting all of these books, um, we were getting books that used to be books on tape. So like one file would be four chapters and then that's not a great listening experience for the customer to be able to browse through. Um, so yeah, we were trying to figure out how we can solve these problems um, for indie authors and make it as easy as possible. So, um, you know, we recommend like each file should be its own chapter and then you, you just drag and drop them and you can reorder them and that actually creates the table of content itself. Um, and within the Cobra Writing Life site, um, you can change the titles, you can listen to the file to make sure you've uploaded the right one. Um, but yeah, no, I really, I really like that you can kind of drag and drop it around. Just like I mentioned, which, um, which is sort of a differentiator from some other audiobook platforms is um, that we allow you to create a pre-order. And again, there's no limitation to um, how far ahead that you can set the pre-order. And you also have complete control over your pricing. Uh, so you can set the price um, um, in up to 16 currencies. So the same currencies that you can with eBooks. Uh, we'll never set the price for you. So um, that's sort of just uh, something that we really wanted to offer the authors. We wanted to give them as much control as possible over this because, you know, audiobooks are really expensive and uh, we want you to get your money's worth from them. Um, and yeah, with that in mind, we're, we're hoping to integrate our promotions tool with audiobooks soon. Um, that's kind of like our next project. Um, but in the meantime, we have audiobook promotions that we're running outside of the tool. Um, so if you're interested, let us know. Um, I think we're gathering for some romance audiobooks for February because uh, February is the most romantic month. Um, so yeah, there's stuff that we're doing. So like, let us know about your audiobooks. Basically, don't be afraid to uh, tell us about anything you're releasing and what you're doing. We want to help. No, this is great. This is fantastic. And it's still pretty interesting to see what, what people will try 
for the audiobook. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we've talked to a lot of people who produce audiobooks and, and create that public uh, professionally. And I think it's fantastic what's available, but uh, it's just another advantage. You know, it's, it's, you have your book, you have your ebook, you have your audiobook, and it just gives you so much more validity, I think. So, yeah. And you're also, you're opening up to another audience. Um, what we noticed at Kobo is that um, our customers for ebooks and audiobooks aren't the same. Um, you know, we're, our ebooks are sort of older women where we find our audiobooks are younger men. So that's been sort of like interesting from a sociological perspective that we're just like, oh, this is like, you know, um, kind of two different people. So um, you never know, your audiobook might appeal to a whole new demographic that didn't previously, um, you know, even know that it was interested in it. Exactly, exactly. And, and there's no way to know that until you get those demographics out there. And exactly. Get that information back. And I understand on the dashboard, we're getting a lot of that information of who's buying and where and what. So that's very advantageous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't tell you specifically, you know, you can't tell if your next door neighbors bought your book, but it'll tell you your book's been sold in Canada. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mom, you said you were going to buy my book and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day, one day we'll get that specific. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's not. <laughs> it's, all, it's all very crazy out there. If somebody's planning and they've got their book ready and they're planning, you know, how soon do they need to get their account set up? once they get it in and then what should, you know, the steps before and after, after they get it in there, what can they connect Kobo to, to, mm -hmm. you know, does it go into their social media and different things like that to, to help them promote and make it easier on their behalf? Yeah, that's a, that's a great note actually, is that um, if you're kind of publishing wide on a lot of platforms, um, I would really say, be sure that you're using links to all of the retailers that you're on. Um, uh, draft to digital have a very good universal linking tool so you could just use one um, link if you wanted but what I would say is um, you know it kind of depends on your schedule if, if um, well firstly you know set up your plan for the year how many books are you going to publish um, you know what's your writing schedule you know some of our authors publish 30 books in one year which is absolutely insane and I don't know how they do it but some of them publish two books in a year. Um, and it's always like, you know, it depends on your own schedule. Um, you know, your readers are going to be loyal to your books. And as long as you're um, kind of on schedule with it, whether it's twice a year or whether it's twice a month, um, they'll respond well to that. So what I would say first off is to make sure you have your schedule. If you have your schedule laid out, you have your cover image, then maybe publish your book and put it up as a pre-order. Um, you can put all of them up if you want. You could do a cover reveal. We've seen authors doing that. Um, so they put up, you know, a pre-order for their book that's out next year with like a cover reveal slowly coming. So um, it really does depend on um, what you kind of want to do as an author. Um, and then once you have kind of your books up as pre-order like that, start looking at your website, making sure that you're including links to where everything's going. When you're sharing on social, are you, are you sharing links to all your retailers? Um, and then maybe find out where your readers are reading, you know, um, author newsletters are really key. Um, mailing lists are, are really kind of your bread and butter. Um, can you do a survey and find out, you know, how many readers do you have in these different areas? Um, and then you can kind of, you know, some um, uh, newsletter companies allow you to sort of um, split up your uh, readers. So, you know, you could target just Kobo readers that, um, you know, read your books. So. Um, and if you ever wanted to offer um, kind of like a reward for signing up to your newsletter, uh, we're happy to make promo codes for any author so they can have a little kind of um, little thank you to uh, a customer. It could be like a little bonus story, um, you know, anything you want, or it could just be a freebie for one of your books. Um, but yeah, we, we find that that's really good for um, reading engagement with um, a newsletter. Right. Uh, having a call to action. Okay, we've got the information for you. Now what do we do? And for the authors who aren't really familiar out there, you need to decide what you want your authors to do. And it's not simply love me, read my book, buy more. It's become engaged because this audience, they bring in their friends, they bring in their family, they talk and it starts a movement. And also by expanding, as you mentioned, within the genres on Kobo, we really have the opportunity to expand and to learn what else is out there and, and to be included in that overall um, process and get more. Yeah. And so, you know, call to actions and having a, a coupon code, that's, that's brilliant. That's brilliant because that's a lot of marketing and behind the scenes is stuff that, you know, most people just go, Ugh, what is that? You know, it's hard enough with a MailChimp or whatever. 
but exactly. to, to have it already done for you, I think that's brilliant. And you can easily put that up on your social media and get going. Absolutely. We want to try and take the pain out of these things for you and do as much as possible. Um, and also promo codes are really good because you don't have to worry about price matching because I know that that can be a, a real concern. You're having to juggle like all these different retailers. So, um, you know, it's full price and you're just offering a, um, whatever discount you would like on that book. Exactly. Exactly. So that's great. And Kobo Writing Life, so as this platform, has a blog and they also have a newsletter to let more people know about these things. Um, should they sign up, just get the account first? And does that include the newsletter? Or how can they get involved first? Because I know some are still writing, some are done. Some are <laughs> yeah. Um, we All of our automated emails that you get whenever you publish a book or anything like that, there are links to the blog. Um, and we would say find us on whatever social platform that you use. Uh, we're on all of them. Um, so if you don't like Facebook, you can find us on Instagram or YouTube. Um, we also have a podcast, um, you know, uh, if that's how you ingest your media, which you do because you're listening to a podcast right now. Um, but it's just a, a weekly podcast called the Kobo Writing Life podcast as well, where we kind of try and share news updates and interviews with authors. Awesome. Awesome. And I do encourage you to go and check that out. I have uh, been following you. I actually picked up some of your blog posts, which I guess were a couple years back as you were working with that and content coordinator, I guess. And uh, th it's really great. There's so much information out there and I do encourage everyone to, to decide what is the most, um, not the most prolific, but the most valid, valid information out there. The, the real uh, experts, because there is just too many people out there claiming to be gurus and have this experience. And I really don't, I, for me, I just think if you haven't been around for the last decade, then yeah. you really are just throwing out the newest and greatest and it doesn't work for everyone. And you really, there's new tools, but those who have audiences and platforms established, they know their people. And mm -hmm. as you said, you know, if, if they're a young male listening to uh, an audiobook or an older woman like myself with her Kindle, uh, you know, it's, it's or your, or your Kobo. Yeah. Or your Kobo. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. No, it's okay. But, uh, you know, it, it's just, well, and most of it's on my phone now. I don't even know where it's coming from. It's just, you know, how do I download this and how do I get to it? that uh, really take the opportunity and get in there and um, enjoy it. Was there anything else that you wanted to add that perhaps I've overlooked that a, a new person would want to know a little tidbit of, uh, you know, I always call them the gold nuggets that <laughs> they walk away with because, you know, you can go to a whole conference, you can go to a, a webinar, but as long as you just take away that one small bit of information that works for you, you yeah. can say the rest because it's overload. We have too much information in the world, but that one little bit that if you can, put to uh, put into action right now and it makes a huge difference for you then you can always come back later for the rest. yeah I think it would be to think about Kobo outside of America and North America and kind of think about us on a global scale um, and in terms of your pricing to kind of really look at your pricing and do some research into the different currency options you know are you leaving money on the table by pricing too low in euro um, you know are you not setting the right Australian dollar price? So um, that would really be my number one sort of um, practical tool. And then on the other um, side of things that I've kind of mentioned a few times, please don't be scared to reach out to us because we love hearing from people and we want to help everyone's um, kind of growth on Kobo. It is so nice to hear uh, real people, you know, humans who answer the phone or the chat or the emails and get back to you. And uh, that's something we emphasize here. And I really love that. And it was so easy to get hold of you. It was so easy to uh, reach yeah, out. I'm just, I'm all over the internet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is really, it's so nice to have a human versus just having to do the research and, and making that connection. I really think that that makes all the difference because, you know, we've had editors, or sorry, authors who've been around for the last 10 plus years and they just come back again and again because they know who they're speaking to and what they need. So thank you yeah. so much for meeting with us today. Again, this is Tara Kremen with uh, Kobo Writing Life. And I do think that you need to check it out, sign up, get your account all set up and make sure that you're checking out their blog and getting on the newsletter so that you can get this new information. They have a strong, long history of, of success and publications and some of the best, most prolific authors out there. Uh, we've, I've been listening to their different podcasts and their success with you. And it's really a great, 
you know, it's a way to mentor yourself into this to, to get to the next level and to, to understand that, you know, it's not just the writing part. Now you've got to take on the harder stuff and uh, this is part of it, but this is the next step in that launching. Thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for awesome. being with us. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Have a great day.